In my last video, I discussed the disparity between men and women in archery. To summarise that video, I addressed the notion that there isn't much difference in the sport between men and women by pointing out that the score gap shows that men do consistently perform better than women in the same event. Additionally, there is a social aspect in the need to encourage women to participate in events where they have a fair chance of success against equal peers, rather than take part in a unified or open event where men are most likely going to dominate. The most common general assumption is that archery, being mostly skill or aiming based, should mean that men and women are on par with each other. However, I provided a point of data to show that this isn't the case. The average score of men in Olympic events is consistently higher than women. There is undeniably a disparity between the sexes. I was inspired by a comment about an open league style where women should be able to qualify in the men's or open division. So I dug further and crunched more numbers to analyse past events. Here's my process. I looked up the official results on the World Archery website. Thankfully, these could be copied and pasted onto a spreadsheet. I got the men's results, color-coded them as blue, and tagged them as M. I then took the women's results, colored them pink, and tagged them as F. I then removed the irrelevant columns to only show the total score. I sorted the entire list by the score. Under typical elimination format rules, I set the cutoff as the top 64. I then added the total number of men and women to show the representation. So first looking at the 2024 Paris Olympics, uh, this one stood out to me for two reasons. The first being is the very high, exceptional scores by the two South Korean women. Uh, in this case, it, it was a world record and quite significantly so. Uh, that said, the current men's record is I think 702 by Brady Ellison, which is still significantly above the record for women, but we are looking at results, not records. So apart from the two South Korean women, the rest of the field is mostly men, although the midfield is quite uh, interestingly mixed, so they splice very closely in this field. So the overall total is 39.1% female to 60.9% male. And that was the second reason why I thought it was unusual. There's more women in this top 64 than what I would anticipate. Now there may be reasons for this. Uh, and the reason may be that, uh, keep in mind, the ranking round is not shot simultaneously. Uh, the men's round was shot in the afternoon and the women's round was shot in the morning. Now, what difference would that make? Uh, different wind conditions, different temperature. Now, I don't remember the conditions in Paris on this day. I do know they predicted a fairly cooler uh, morning, which is about 26 degrees at the highest, whereas the men shot in around 29 degrees uh, Celsius, of course, um, in the afternoon. So that does play a bit of a factor. So different temperature, different wind may influence the men to underperform, in which case many of them did, whereas the women uh, did better, uh, especially these two trailblazers in the South Korean team. Now to help build this pattern, I looked at the previous Olympics as well. Going to 2020 Tokyo, or 2021, um, the proportion is still quite high towards women. So 35.9% females, 64.1% males. Uh, at the top end again, Korea, uh, they basically take uh, the top women's. Uh, there's a bit of a bubble towards the middle, and it's mostly men until the women towards the bottom here. So again, it's mostly the, the bulk of the, the, the women's uh, top third will fit in the bottom third uh, when put alongside the men. Now the 2016 Olympics probably reflects a more normal pattern which you'll see across the other uh, events as well. So in this case, it's 20.6% women, 17.9% men. And as you can see, that's significantly male dominated. Um, again, we'll see the women towards the bottom part of the men's, but that is very male dominated. 2012, uh, which is in London, 21.9% uh, women, 78.1% men in the uh, top 64. So that's all the Olympics so far. At least the recent four, rather. Now, to compare this to the World Cup, because the Olympic Games isn't actually the best data source, it may represent the best or the prestigious competition, the, the highest level competition, but bear in mind that the Olympics is selective, so um, it doesn't reflect those who qualify uh, for a world event. It is uh, limited based on quota spots, so you don't necessarily get the best of the world. 
and there are fewer participants. Um, there are only 64 participants per six or per gender, which means that uh, it's a pretty small data uh, sample size. So I looked at the World Cup. The World Cup series is more open entry, so countries can enter multiple uh, people and more countries more countries participate, uh, which means that you'll see more people at these events. I applied the same rules, they also have a 64 person elimination cutoff, so I merged both men and women into one event. So 2024 in Antalya is extremely dismal if we mix the two sexes. So in this case, it's 10.9% female. 89.1% male. There are only 7 out of 64 in a theoretical combined event. Now, there may be uh, an outlier here because like we said with the 2024 ones, there's unusually higher number of high scoring females and Talia a very low number of high scoring females and it may be a female event, it was raining, it was windy, I don't remember this event um, and the men had a better qualifying day. Uh, the men generally scored two par, not world record level, but two standard in their spread whereas the women were significantly low. Uh, again, not saying women are bad, it may be the qualifying was much worse, but that, that was the outline, the bottom edge was 11% female for Antalya. In 2024 Yichun, it was 23.4% women, 76.6% men. Again, the spread is mostly male dominated in the top third, uh, and the women towards multiple to bottom half there. Uh, 2024 Shanghai, uh, 16 women, 48 men, so 25%, 75%, uh, one quarter women exactly. Again, the top third is mostly men, women were in the, in the middle and perhaps bottom third there. Last year, 2023 Paris World Cup, uh, again 21.9% women, 78.1% men. Uh, Limsey Young was the first place woman, top third there, and everybody else was the bottom. And the Medellin in Colombia, 2023, again exactly one quarter women, one quarter men in this hypothetical situation where we merge both sexes in one competition. So what can we conclude from this data? The general pattern is that if we combine men and women into one event, whether it's a unified or open event, there will still be across the board about one quarter women compared to three quarters men in the top 64, which is what is used for the eliminations. That to me on the surface level doesn't represent parity. It's, it's pretty close and in some events if you look at the ranking round it is fairly close, but it's not parity. When you have three quarters men, I don't think that's sufficient reason by results alone to merge men and women together. I don't think it's a fair competition. The reasons why I've explored in the previous video, there are biological differences between men and women, which provide some advantage to men, a slight edge, but an edge nonetheless, which shows a systematic disparity between men and women. Secondly, as I mentioned before, the social uh, ramifications of women in the sport, not in a negative way, but to encourage participation, because again, sport in general, and archery specifically, has been male dominated. It is very hard to get women into the sport and staying in the sport and competing in the sport. I'm saying this as a grassroots club level coach, it's very hard to motivate people, women specifically, to compete. So if we merge the event, you will see fewer women want to compete because they know they will lose against men. Not the elite level, but just the grassroots level which you need to develop to get people to elite level. That's a very hard path for archery, even harder for women who don't have the same support given our social value on sport. Now, the other thing is we have to acknowledge the outliers, and that is South Korea. The South Korean women are an entire league above most other countries. It's almost, you can't include them in the data. Because one, there's always three of them in that list. They're always uh, top rank virtually every time. Um, and on one occasion, yes, that was the Paris one, they did outscore the men in the ranking round, though in no other event has women outscored the top score for men. Um, they've come close in terms of the top, say, uh, 10, but not 
in any way have to beat the men in ranking. So that's still an outlier. It's the peak, but if you compare the top end, the record, men are still an edge above women. That's enough to say that for the rest of the field, it's unrealistic to say they have a good chance or a fair chance against men in the same event. And again, if you remove the three South Korean women in every single event, that's three less women in the top 64 in a hypothetical uh, mixed event. I want to be clear that I'm not arguing for a culture war or a gender war. Like I train women, I train teenage girls, I'm a coach, uh, I support this. Uh, I just don't think it's realistic to say that men and women are exactly the same in a sport that actually does have clear disparities between the physical abilities of men and women. Um, it does have social differences between men and women. And the results don't lie. If we do see close to a 50-50 and women do consistently uh, rank uh, equal to the top men, I think that's a fair comment and a fair basis to start considering merging. Though, like I said, it still has a run-on effect um, towards low level. So it doesn't make sense to um, unify elite level but segregate low level because you're basically throwing uh, low level women who might succeed in a segregate event at low level but then they'll fail in a combined elite level. Uh, you've got to treat the sport equally across all levels, otherwise you can't get people from grassroots to competition. So that's the reason why um, the format is the way it is. I personally do think it gives more women the chance to grow in the sport because they've got more chance to be seen, recognised to achieve, and I feel that it's more equal and fair to that particular set of participants. If you mix it with men, it's going to reinforce that male dominant sport stereotype and it's less encouraging for women in my opinion i'm not speaking as a woman of course but in my opinion it's more intimidating to go into a field against men um, a handful might go whatever i'll beat them regardless and again a very experienced well-trained female archer will completely smash the average man but the high elite female is probably less likely to be a highly trained elite man in the same event same distance and everything and i don't think it's conducive for the sport to merge the event we want more people involved uh, we want people to feel welcome in the sport which means that they're not forced into situations or events where they're facing unfair opponents Anyway, that's my continuation, my thoughts. Um, it's been interesting to explore this, especially from a data point of view. I think it's very easy to take, be carried away by the emotional arguments and um, the whole um, feminist argument. And I mean, these are fair opinions for many other contexts, but I think in archery, it's not ready yet to be unified as one event. And again, the data is there. If there are posting viewpoints, I'd be interested uh, just to listen to and see if it goes anywhere. Um, but that's here for you to see. The data is linked as well. So hopefully um, you can draw some um, educated and informed conclusions based on what I found.